my name is Kathleen and welcome to Pray Like a Girl. Tomorrow is the beginning of summer. In Georgia it's felt like summer for you know a month and a half now but for the rest of the world it's now summer tomorrow on June 20th. So what is a better thing to talk about than summer reading lists? I've got a stack but you can't see it. I could pick it up. Ugh. Thumbnail! These are just books that I have pulled off the shelves that I currently own. I'm a big library fan and obviously the library is closed, have not been able to go to the library. Um, but these are books that I have, they're my go-tos and I really think that they're great for spiritual growth, um, for knowledge of the church and understanding why we believe what we believe. Um, and that's the point, right? The point of spiritual reading is to develop and grow your relationship with God. Summer reading, spiritual reading book list, 2020. Is it allowed to be spiritual reading if we don't include the Bible? The Bible is for Catholics. I'm going to be honest, I have not read the Bible cover to cover. I'm going to start reading the Bible, not cover to cover. The whole thing though, July 1st, that is my um, starting date for that. The whole, the whole ent entirety of the Word of God, um, because he gave it to us, so. Why not? But currently I read um, the, the daily readings and gospel for the day. This is the word of God and not just another devotional. Um, everything in this Bible is there for a reason, including the bits about sin, including the bits about salvation, um, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the letters, the life of Jesus, the life of Adam and Eve, all of it, all of it. It was all given to us by God. So if we're gonna do spiritual reading and you're not reading the Bible, Stop the video. Don't read anything else until you've opened up this one. It should have a cracked spine. It should. Bibles for Catholics, my friends. For basics, I would recommend starting here. Bible Basics for Catholics by Dr. John Bergsma. Um, and it shows us how our Catholic faith is deeply rooted in scripture, which is why we need to read the Bible as Catholics. Come on, guys. But look how skinny it is. It's only... 200 pages and it goes really really a great beginning a jumping point if you don't know where to start when it comes to the bible and the catholic church so this is a great one it has pictures i don't know if you can see that other one c.s lewis the screw tape letters it's a series of letters written by a devil to his like little demon nephew in this scenario every demon is assigned a human um to torment and get to hell um, so it's a weird read because the enemy is God, um, and it's the devil directly attacking the human, right? To try to get, get them to hell. So this is a really, really good book on self-reflection, but it's really good to, um, as an examination of conscience and kind of re looking back at your life and saying, look, what can I do to make my life, um, less sinful, avoid the things that are listed out in this book and see different ways the devil is working to attack you because he's working really hard to do that. Something that I've been struggling a lot with recently is abandoning myself to the will of God. So this book, Abandonment to Divine Providence, it's by Jean-Pierre de Cossade. Oh gosh, I hope I pronounced that right. Just giving yourself completely to God at every moment. Total abandonment to God total abandonment to his will. And that does not mean doing nothing and just saying it's all up to you, God, but it means living every single moment and recognizing that God is there. And the choices you make are are his, right? They are for him and for the betterment of the kingdom and for, for your holiness, right? And for your sanctification. So this is a great book to, to remind you that, you know, he is in control. This is kind of a random one. Me, myself, and Bob. It's that many tales, guys. Okay, I love this book though. It is so freaking good. It's about the rise and fall of Veggie Tales. You know, Phil Vischer went bankrupt. He did. This is the book for the artist in me, the businesswoman, the one that wants to go do things, and I feel inspired and called by our Lord, and I don't know how to place it. Phil Vischer is not Catholic. Um, he does not claim to be. Very, his life story is very inspiring. How open he is just to the will of God and whatever that just needs to be done. Would recommend. Another that I would recommend is A Man for Others. This one's specifically about um, Maximilian Colby. I did not know about him so much until I read this book. Holy crap, I just knew him. He was the saint that died in the concentration camp. Okay, guys, he was so much more than that. He went to Japan, he started a publication that like 
went across Poland when there was like control of Poland and you couldn't publish anything, but this Marian publication was going everywhere. He formed the Immaculata, consecrated Poland to our Blessed Mother. Holy crap. If you want to know more about Max Van Colby, I would definitely recommend this book. And he's a saint, not because of the way he died, but because of the way he lived. And I didn't know about the way he lived until I read this book, so dang it, read this book! Talking about other people who are saints, but um, this woman isn't dead yet, so she's not technically canonized a saint. This book is called Left to Tell, and it's um, written by Immaculate. She is a survivor of the Rwandan genocide. She hid in a bathroom. Um, during the genocide and was miraculously unfound and she drew so much closer to um, God during that time crammed in the bathroom with um, a bunch of other women. It's a really beautiful story. I've heard her speak to. She's amazing. The dedication this woman has to our Lord and Our Lady even after everything she's lost is incredible. The last book I'm going to recommend is Story of Soul. This is a super used old copy given to me by my grandmother. It's uh, falling apart. I don't even know if there's a cover page in here. I broke it. It's fine. There she is! My homegirl, Therese. You know, this book is super over-recommended for Catholic women, but if you haven't read it, this is my two cents. Read it. She has just such a beautiful life of littleness and simplicity. I want to be Joan of Arc and go lead an army and change the world, right? I want to be Mother Teresa. I want to be John Paul II. I want to be these huge names. Therese lived in a convent most of her life um, or at home. She was cloistered. Nobody knew who she was. And yet she has such an astounding lifelong impact on so many people because of the way that she lived, because of the littleness and the humility in her life. Um, and so that's something I especially can learn from, that we can all learn from. Guys, I know that's a lot of books. It's not super light summer reading, but it's good. Where do I get started? Catholic summer reading. I hope you'll just choose one. And if you don't choose one of these, just choose, I mean, choose the Bible. Duh. Choose any Catholic spiritual reading book. Just pick one up and read it for 10 minutes every night. Learn more about what you believe. That's it for today's video. Um, pray for me. I'll pray for you. And... Um, like, comment, subscribe. Am I doing this YouTuber thing right?